Welcome to the Guaranteed Irish Business Podcast, where each week we're joined by the amazing leaders of Guaranteed Irish member businesses to chat all things business, sustainability, buying Irish, promoting Irish jobs, community, provenance, and so much more. Sponsored by FBD Insurance, Ireland's largest homegrown insurer. Support, it's what we do. Hello and welcome to the Guaranteed Irish Business Podcast, where each week we're joined by amazing leaders of Guaranteed Irish member businesses to chat all things business, sustainability, buying Irish, promoting Irish jobs, community and provenance, and so much more. My name is Sean, standing in for Breed O'Connell this week, and joining me today is Simon McGuinness, National Sales Manager of Home Care Medical, one of the largest providers of products and services to the non-acute healthcare market in Ireland. And of course, a guaranteed Irish member. Hi, Simon. Thanks for coming in. How Hi, are you? Sean. All good. Thanks very much. Thanks for, for, for joining us today. Now, for those who might not be aware, let's jump straight in. Give us a bit of a background on Home Care Medical, who you guys are, where you came from, how long you've been around and, and exactly kind of what you guys do. Yeah, no problem. And thanks again for having us. Um, Home Care Medical was established back in 1988, many moons ago, by my uh, parents, Mary and Peter McGuinness, along with my uncle Noel. Um, like many companies at the time, it started out in the back kitchen and uh, the original uh, idea was to uh, cover need in the market for adults in continence wear. So very glamorous stuff. Um, it just progressed from there over the last 34 years to a point now where we've over 100 employees based in the west of Ireland covering nationwide healthcare markets and um, going from strength to strength, thankfully. Very good. So it started, apparently, seemingly then, from quite humble beginnings and quite quite a quick growth. Uh, family business still? Still family-owned, yeah, and uh, second generation involved now. So myself and my two brothers um, are there, and mum and dad are still in the thick of it. So it's, uh, yeah, good good fun around the kitchen table. You're not letting them go anytime soon, I'm no. guessing? No, well, we can't push them out the door too quick. So, yeah, yeah, all good. <laughs> yeah, that might be a bit too obvious. Yes, yeah. Um, so tell us, give us an overview. I know you guys started just with the, with the, with the small single product, but I was looking through your website, and it's almost endless the sorts of products and services that you guys provide now. Give us a, a bit of a lowdown on, on what you have available. There are um, three key markets that now we're, we are based in the healthcare sector in Ireland and um, there are three key markets that we uh, we service. Uh, the first one being uh, nursing homes and residential care facilities around the country. Um, the second one would be the retail and online web for people uh, in their own home or caring for people in their own home. And then the third one would be in the community and the HSE contracted business that we have. So across all them three market sectors, there's synergies in some of the products that would be equating to all three. Um, and then we have a logistics and customer service divisions that look after each of them individually as well. So quite a broad portfolio of products. There's over two and a half thousand products on the shelf at any given time. Um, from some of the basic consumable stuff like the uh, incontinence wear, right down to high end medical equipment and uh, pressure care and beds and mattresses and that type of stuff. And where can people go to, to buy the products? Are they in stores? Do you have your own stores around the country? Yeah, so in the in the retail outlets, which is a really exciting um, market for us at the moment, it's uh, booking the trend in some of the national retail that's happening out there. We're actually expanding our business in retail. There are over 12 uh, home care uh, medical shops around the country. Um, there's one of them going to be launched in 2023 in the Midlands and further developments there. But they can also uh, avail of all the products online at homecaremedical.ie. Um, so that's proving really successful for us because there is a gap between uh, people requiring that 24-7 care in facilities like nursing homes um, to people being able to care for at home. So there is, a, there is a need for some products and services there that we can provide. Well, that's interesting you say that because, <coughs> excuse me, I'll start that again. It's interesting you say that because, of course, it, it you know you maybe focus on sort of an older generation, but of course it would be their kids and grandkids who would be as much involved in making sure they're getting the right products. So how do, how do you make sure that your message is hitting all the right people at the right time? Um, I won't lie to you, it's a challenge. Um, the products that we provide are for the end user, the person that will benefit the most from them, but our customer is typically the person that's caring for that person. So um, we have a, a challenge there trying to market to those people, but they are typically somebody that's looking after somebody at home, their mom or dad, um, or somebody that's looking after somebody in a nursing home, which could be a, a director of nursing or a caring assistant in there. Um, so it's two different messages, but um, the end goal is trying to help those people care, which is our tagline, helping you care. So that's, that's where our mission is, trying to focus on those that are providing the care, and then we're very aware of the impact of those products and services that we have to try and uh, get the best possible outcomes for the people involved. Very good. So I suppose caring for people will be one of your primary pillars for being, I suppose. Uh, what others would you really focus on in terms of like what would be your core values and core pillars for success? I think one of the main ones that drives us in the last 15 years in particular is the quality ethos that we brought into play. I think we have 
um, three key uh, ISO standards that we conform to, the 9001 management, uh, the 14001, which is really important to us, which is the environmental standards that we conform to, and then the 13485, which is the medical device um, standards, which allows us to put in systems um, to be able to track and place every item that we buy and sell into the marketplace um, and have complete visibility over where it goes. So that quality ethos is really important to us and that trickles down through all the customer service. Um, we have customer service team dedicated to each sector in the, the retail, the residential and in the, the contract uh, community stuff. Um, and each of those will be suitably trained in answering the questions or queries that those people may have to be able to deliver the best possible service. So customer service is right up there with uh, something that's really important to us. And then the, the quality and sustainability aspect of it again is is huge. It's it's really important that uh, we look at what we do every day of the week um, and make sure that we're doing it in the best environmental way possible that delivers on what we have promised to deliver to our customers, but also delivers for us as a company in our social responsibility. You mentioned that uh, the environment is a big, important thing to you. And obviously, sustainability is one of the core things of Guaranteed Irish. We, we, we want to promote sustainability in everything. So I don't think a lot of people would necessarily relate sustainability with, you know, the medical field or pharmaceuticals or healthcare. So tell us about, I suppose, your own green agenda and sustainability journey. Yeah, it's um, it's quite a challenge when you're um, primary delivering consumable items, which are single use and uh, they're effectively used once and thrown in the bin. It's quite a challenge to try and line up manufacturers, suppliers and us as a distributor um, to make that as sustainable as possible. Um, one of the advents of the, the 14,001 ISO standard would um, show in the last 10 years we've had 100% uh, zero landfill in home care from all of the work that we do in our warehouse logistics and retail shops. For example, we had in 2022 over 40 tonnes of cardboard recycled, over 28 tonnes of plastic recycled. So that's been ongoing for the last 10 years. This didn't happen in the last 18 months. So we have quite an ethos build up in uh, and a culture in the organisation that sustainability does matter. And everybody in every department is... Um, signed into that so that which which is great um one of the biggest investments that we've made in the last 18 months is on our solar uh panels we've introduced in late uh 2022 um over 200 kilowatts of pv solar panels in our headquarters in ballyhonas and our service and decontamination center in kelchma which is a huge investment for us as a company um timely uh, in terms of the yeah. energy <laughs> crisis that we're doing but sure. it, it, it was in motion um over 18 months ago and um we were fortunate enough to get it over the line and installation has happened. So we would hope that by 2025, all of our energy, electricity energy requirements will be sustainable, which will be a, an amazing achievement. And that will allow us to go on to our next step of introducing EV charging points and electric vehicles for our distribution team as well. So um, big, big agenda on home care's books and uh, we're really having an impact now in the next two or three years. So that's fantastic. Great. Well, we'll definitely have you back on to learn more about how go. that's yeah, going yeah. because I'm sure you could inspire a lot of other members, listeners, even just interested parties in how to go about solar because, again, that's something that I know a lot of people want to do, but not a lot of people know maybe how to do or yep. might think, oh, that's not really relevant to me, but if it's relevant to everyone. You to everybody, yeah. You yeah. put a solar panel on your house, you could put a solar panel on your car if you could get one decently. Yeah, and we're, we're fortunate enough that we have quite large logistics hubs around the country, so we have a lot of roof space, and it, it made perfect sense to be able to try and utilize that space to make uh, us more sustainable, but then it, it, it benefits the, the employees working in the facility as well because they can actually drive their electric car in now and be able to charge up the car while they're at work and drive home. So it has a knock-on benefit to, to everybody, I think. So, absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah no, that's, yeah. that's absolutely fantastic. We mentioned there that, you know, timely things, uh, <laughs> the, 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 the sustainable electricity and stuff like that, very timely. Um, something that maybe wasn't so expected a couple of years ago, obviously, was the shall we say the thing that shall not be named in 2020 that obviously affected pretty much everyone in in so many ways but you guys do a lot of work with actual carers and you know home home cares that can't really shut down shop because everything they do is so important they literally need to keep people alive so how did you guys adapt to what happened in 2020 um with great difficulty uh we are a vital cog in the healthcare supply chain in ireland in the in the residential sector in particular and uh, we all know the, the difficulties and challenges that nursing homes had, uh, particularly at the beginning of COVID. Um, 
uh, we had significant challenges in the supply chain. I think no, nobody was unique to that. Um, we did manage to switch to a remote working model quite quickly. We had the, the management systems and quality controls already in place, so it allowed us to continue unabated. Um, I think we served our markets well. I think w- we had challenges, but uh, nothing in comparison to the to those that were providing care on the front line, I think. But we did what we could to continue to support those people, and um, hopefully it's behind us. There's still some legacy um, COVID stuff out there, but um, I think we'd have learned a lot about uh, about that whole experience. Well, it's interesting you say that, because I, w- I wanted to ask, like, putting maybe not that it's the, maybe the wrong way to say this but putting a positive spin on what did happen what maybe new systems new management styles even just new learnings did you pick up through those two years that you've carried on and will continue to carry on into the future for for your company yeah i think the, the there was two key learnings i think one was in relation to our staff i think uh, we have adopted a uh, a very uh, different approach to remote work now. Um, I think over 50% of our staff at any given time can can work remotely, um, which was unheard of uh, three years ago. Um, that has been hugely beneficial to the work-life balance of our employees, and then as a result, you become, I think we've seen productivity uh, certainly increase. So that that's a big learning. And because we had the quality systems in place, it allows us to, to switch to that model quite quickly. So we didn't have to play catch up to a large degree. I think, um, in terms of the the work and the logistics um the use of um smart management systems in terms of routing um in terms of logistics and delivery um we learned a lot about being efficient and lean i think um we couldn't afford to be making mistakes in, in deliveries or um collections of products so um i think we learned a lot about the importance of having good quality control measures in place that can be controlled and managed and dialed up or dialed down as the need arises. So um, there will be further investment in IT, I think, as a result of that, to make us uh, more efficient and cut down on any of the potential waste that might happen. So um, between staff and uh, the use of technology, I think it's been a big learning for everybody. Brilliant. Yeah. So coming out of that, that period, 2022, obviously was kind of the first year that everything started to get back to a semblance of normality. What, I suppose, differences, growth or change did you notice for yourselves and for the industry coming out of COVID and into like maybe the latter half of 2022 as things really started to feel more normal that you think might carry over into 2023 and beyond? It's, um, it was different in different sectors. I would say there was a huge rebound in the retail uh, aspect of our business where um, people were more inclined to look after their loved ones at home. So there was a need and a want for people to go out there and search for products that could help people live at home more independently and live fuller lives. And we've seen a positive growth in that. Different than in the nursing home sector, we've seen uh, a more of a consolidation of what's happening in that sector. There was a lot of fear attached to the nursing home sector, given the COVID impact that they had. There are significant funding issues in the nursing home residential sector at the moment, which is having a lot of pressure on that market. In both sides, there was there, there was positives and negatives. I think rolling on into 2023, we would say the continued trend in retail will be positive. Um, I, I still think that the nursing home residential side of things has um, has a way to go in terms to try and address the aging population and the funding model around that. And I think there's there's ongoing discussions out about that. So. Um, I think that would be more same same but um hopefully there'll be some some light at the end of the tunnel in that as well we had christmas obviously very tough time especially for people who are taking care of loved ones how do you guys adapt to that what maybe supports extra do you offer over christmas time to those who who will be maybe a little bit more in need at such a difficult time yeah i think it, it's vital i think we would always say that uh bank holidays and uh public holidays are our busiest period because inevitably when something goes wrong it goes wrong when there's no one at work um, we'd be very conscious of that because you can't allow somebody that's in need of urgent care for products or services um, to have a wait of three or four days. So there would always be uh, a team of engineers on the ground that would be able to respond to emergency call outs at any given time. There would also be uh, a customer service uh, team available 24 seven over the Christmas period and to answer any of the queries or uh, respond to any of the emergent calls. And because we're based um, all over the country, we can respond within an hour or two to any call out. So um, we're very well positioned to be able to to manage those um, difficult challenges over the Christmas period, I think, which is which is good. Brilliant. Well, I hope it uh, hope it all went very smoothly for everyone involved. Um, Finally, then, uh, January here now is our our healthcare and pharmaceuticals month here in Guaranteed Irish, where we like to promote 
I suppose the good work that, that, that health and pharma companies do, like yourselves, other than just, you know, companies that might produce drugs or, or pharmacies or something like that. But obviously healthcare and is, is so much broader. Um, and I think we've talked about a lot of things today that maybe some people might not have really related to, to that uh, industry. Um, so following on from that, what would maybe be one key message that you would like to impart to our listeners today to, to take away from today and just kind of a pharma and healthcare month in general? I think that there was two key things. I think there's um, there's a, it's a broad understanding now in Ireland that there's an aging population. We have um, a huge amount of people in need of some form of care, be it just a helping hand at home or 24-7 care in uh, nursing homes or residential facilities. And I think we need to acknowledge that. I think the one key message is that uh, we need to support that industry and we need to acknowledge that there are thousands of people that need help. And I would hope that home care would be able to be well positioned to live or give those people independent and live fuller lives as a result of some of the goods and services that we can supply. What a very good message to end on. Simon McGuinness from Home Care Medical, thank you very, very much for joining us today. Thanks very much, Sean. And if you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe wherever you are listening. Uh, and to learn more about Home Care Medical, their website and contact information is in the show notes down below. The Guaranteed Irish Business Podcast, sponsored by FBD Insurance, Ireland's largest homegrown insurer. Support. It's what we do.